Hello to all my friends out there. Hi, you guys. Here we are, another day in paradise. Um, I wanted to mention one of the comments, and it was not everyone has can enjoy their life. Um, years ago, I made the habit out of enjoying life. It just became habitual because um, there's always going to be something wrong. And I've told my followers the story about how my ex-husband was dying and it was so habitual for me to enjoy life that I would try to do everything to make it better. I would get water. I would do like all this stuff, you know, just trying to make life better. And so finally, um, it was really bad, it, you know, and I was with him in the hospital. I had the night shift because I was an insomniac. And um, then he had to go to a nursing home. And like, you know, when you're nightmares of nightmares. So we got to the nursing home and the re it was lucky the way it worked out because my ex-husband had a rental and the renter, <laughs> this was bad, fell off the roof. He was doing something up there on the roof and he was sent to this nursing home. So that's how we knew about it. And the care was good. And believe it or not, my ex-husband got the same nurse as, you know, this this friend of ours was the renter. So that was good. But it was nothing but horrifying. So we got in there. He got settled. And, and we're looking at each other. This is, this, you know, there's bad. There's bad, bad. And then there's just like horrific. This is it, right? And, and my poor ex-husband was, you know, totally and completely helpless. And I go, just we're going to watch some TV. We're going to watch Duck Dynasty. I subscribe to them now. Um, uh, we're going to watch Seinfeld. We're going to watch uh, The Big Bang Theory. And so we got the TV adjusted and the neighbor guy, there's three of them. And the other one was in real dreadful shape too. And he goes, turn that thing down. And I go, oh, sorry, sorry. So I would go in there and we watch these shows. And, you know, I would get him the water, I'd bring him snacks, I would do everything, and every once in a while, he would accidentally forget how bad it was, and we would watch TV. That's what we used to do at night anyways, lay around and watch TV. And so the next thing you know, the neighbors were watching it, <laughs> all the shows we were, and we were like one big happy family. And, you know, and, and I look forward to seeing them. And when we left, I, I said, well, I'm sorry to, you know, we're going to have to be leaving. But I said, Mike, we got to get out of here. So anyway, even in the worst of times, I would work, uh, the I will describe the beauty shops I would work in were stink holes, literally. And I, I would clean my station up and, you know, I would try to make it as pleasant as possible. For one thing, women don't want to be miserable. So, you know, it was just habitual. And I would have to sit in my chair all day and wait for clients or, you know, I'd be working on people. What if life was miserable that whole time because I would work from eight to eight? So it became habitual this enjoying life like I could I remember one time like for a, a joke at my salon for like a birthday present someone gave me a can of spam two potatoes and a green beans and I laughed and I told her we eat that all the time and they laughed like ha 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 we went home I made that for my son I baked my spam like a little ham and we had some baked potatoes and some green we enjoyed it you know hey <laughs> that was a pretty that was not a stink hole that was a nice shop okay so now i want to say hi to disabled and prepping when i was getting ready to do this video she had like a few uh likes on my um twitter and go to you guys go to my twitter because rotostone twitter that's where i post all the good videos and recipes for you guys 
So hi to Disabled and Prepping, and she has a channel, and I would subscribe. I, as soon as her stuff comes up, I watch it, and she has little hauls and prepping stuff she does that's really easy to do. So if you're new to prepping, check that out. And hi, hi to Care Bear, that's the dog. Okay, so now I've been working on cheese making. And when the, the student is ready, when the pupil's ready, the teacher will come. So I found one, how to make homemade mozzarella in 30 minutes survival HT. Here it is. Go and subscribe to this lady. She also has a good uh, homemade uh, spaghetti sauce. But, you know, I am going to get the rennet and the... Um, citric acid i can find citric acid but she mentions that you can get junket you know for like uh it'd be like for making uh jello and stuff like that i've seen it so i have hopes uh the mozzarella cheese i made was was okay both times it was much better with the organic milk but I have hopes that I am going to be able to make some good mozzarella cheese. So I made sunflower seed butter. Okay, so now why that is it possible, why that is so good is because it is possible to store seeds over a long period of time. And you're going to have peanut butter or sunflower seed butter or cashew butter. It's very, very easy to make. Uh, I, I'm going to be making butter, uh, skillet bread. That was a new recipe, and I got an awesome recipe. The last time, uh, you know, we had the sequestering or whatever they call it, you know, we couldn't get yeast. That's okay. I bought big buckets of soda and baking powder at um, Smart and Final Cheese Making, and I've been dehydrating celery, basil, green onions, and parsley. Here is a list if you guys want to try it. This is easy things you can do that's really going to keep your um, you going. You know, uh, if you're gonna if you get your hands on some fresh tomatoes and you have dehydrated, I saw um, where was it? I saw basil plants for a dollar ninety nine. I'm going to buy one and plant it in my backyard, but the basil I got was from my son's house. And so I think I'm going to uh, get a basil plant. Okay, so now I've been watching the food hauls and the, the food hauls from food banks and food pantries. And that can give you a lot of good ideas on stuff to give, but it can also give you a good idea what's going to happen if you have to go to one. So why that is important is what little food stamps or money you have, you can make better use of what you're going to purchase. So um, those are, and then what I'm doing, I have followers. I'm not watching the HelloFresh. Okay, don't watch it. But what you could do is you could compare the food bank and food pantry halls with the HelloFresh. And you could combine the two to give yourself a higher standard of living. Okay, that's what I'm doing. I'm into that. You guys know that. <laughs> I, people used to say I try to give myself an unfair advantage. Hello, you could do this as well. Anybody, it, it is like continuous effort. Not a lot, just a little bit. Okay, I've been doing $5 food storages or $10 food for one week. And that is just two various ways to stockpile food. I bought quite a bit of food for very little money. I'm refilling my water because on Wednesday, so today is what, Friday? Wow, the week's going by fast. So we have Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, six days approximately before some event that is coming on the next coming Wednesday. So I'm, I'm cleaning out my uh, trash cans, all my trash cans. I'm cleaning my bathtub good. And at the first sign of trouble, I will fill them with water because I have the garden and it has got to be watered. And then I'm planting the garden. I mean, even if you only have a little planter, you can plant a lot of stuff in there. And so some of my plants are kind of ending one cycle. 
and as they end, I'm, I, you need 60 days for a growing cycle. I didn't know that. I was raised in the city. Uh, this lady, uh, this HD Survival, Survival, capital H, capital T, she does uh, gardening as well. When I was going to the Adventist, they told us, you must buy a small farm. So I said, okay, that's impossible in California. Well, believe it or not, I search around and you know, it's not impossible. Um, a small farm would be 10 acres, but you know, if, like for a single woman, that's a little too much, but maybe something like a half acre, I'm looking into that. Because it keeps you active and you know, you provide food for yourself and even during like the depressions and the, um, the currency collapses and depressions, if you have a little land. So we want to kind of learn to do this now because it is strongly possible that all of this, I remember this lady from uh, China and they were like, you know, the media doesn't tell us, but they were like a year ahead of us. And so she had been, uh, they had been struggling for a year and she goes, we can make it a year, but we can't make it two. So strongly possible this is gonna play out for another year. And then what I do is I try to find items to sell on eBay or Etsy, and then I sell the rejects at the swap meet. So that's what I do in a day, but I'm also adding to this, um, I've been watching these, um, these homestead type preppers. I mean, extreme, like no electricity and stuff. And I thought, well, this is like the, the, uh, food pantry videos and, uh, hello fresh videos. Oh, you guys, the cheesecakes and the black lava cakes. <laughs> I told my son, don't, don't order me any more of those. I ate three of them yesterday. I'm supposed to be watching my weight. They're so good. <laughs> and he goes, well, it's too late. I already ordered you some, some uh, additions. So we'll see what those are next week. So, okay. So now I'm looking into this homesteading approach. And then, and you guys will know when I know. And then during the day to save money and to make myself acclimated, I live in my car. I've been doing this since the first of the year and there's no way to tell how much money it saved me. There has no way to tell you how filthy my car is. When I first started doing the car living, I, I, you know, like people who don't know what the hell they're talking about, it's very important to keep your vehicle clean. Well, when you're living in it, it, it gets messed up. Yesterday, I was trying to clean just the driver's side in the back seat, you know, vacuuming. It was really bad. Um, if uh, and I will be trying to secure a vehicle of some sort that I possibly could live in, like some kind of van or larger car. I can actually comfortably sleep in my back seat if I wanted to. And then hopefully, I was hoping this, I do not think the coast is clear. I think the, the variant is swell is spreading uh you know uh during the the first great illness it was a while before we found out people we actually knew got it like when it killed my uncle who was old, elderly it's hard to survive pneumonia and so now people are starting to admit to having it you know people we know in our everyday lives that ain't good so we, I told my son, as long as we keep doing exactly what we did last year, we should get through this year. And so, but if you guys are like I am and you've been making these little uh, preparations as we go along, we should be better equipped this year. Okay, you guys, keep prepping. Food, water, gas, cash, and the gas is going up and a weapon of some sort. I can't really imagine myself attacking someone. <laughs> I really can't, but you know, I might have to.
Okay, you guys, please like, comment, and subscribe, and God bless you all.